I move that the question be now put. Um, I call Lawrence Hill. Mr Chair, um, thank you for, uh, to the Honourable Damien O'Connor for his, um, his call. Uh, I think, uh, just to go back to a question I asked previously, which I'm going to restate, my question was not around whether the Health and Safety Acts were complied with. My question was around whether, in fact, under the rewording of Clause 41AEB and the striking out of the Maritime Transport Act, that all the relevant provisions, um, as was talked about by the New Zealand Law Society, were now complied with. It was not about whether the Health and Safety Act was complied with, it was about whether there was total consistency uh, with this change um, and the Health and Safety Act now that the fact that the, the Maritime Transport Act has been removed. Uh, so I'd ask the Minister whether he could uh, try and answer that question. It's probably a simple yes or no answer, but uh, at this stage, I'd just like to understand whether that's the case. I also wish to um, talk briefly on the comment the Minister made about gaming and around um, the fact that the Minister has some discretion uh, under the compelling reason clause. Uh, and one of his views and his comments was that there is a compelling reason if the Minister doesn't know or if the entity doesn't know. Um, I think the, the, the issue that was raised uh, by Jonathan Young, which I strongly agree with, sometimes power and control changes, um, particularly in the share market, um, for a whole lot of commercial reasons. And I think the Minister and this Parliament needs to be careful that we do not uh, detract from value-based decisions that are made on behalf of entities and shareholders. Uh, because somehow they're going to be trapped later on by this call that they didn't get prior advice. Uh, and the issue I challenge the Minister with or ask him to respond to is probably a better term is if in fact it is known to people and to the market ahead of time that this type of thing is going on or there could potentially be a change in control, then that ultimately uh, will get reflected uncertainty in the market and then value for all the various parties uh, who may be current shareholders or future shareholders. So I think all we're trying to get to is um, if, if the Minister, and, and I haven't seen the, the um, version of what a compelling reason is, but if, the, if whether it's a, a valid um, um, definition or not, the issue that we're trying to raise is sometimes control of organisation changes at very short notice, and if you give people a whole lot of notice or you give people a whole lot of information ahead of that time, the, via, the mere um, fact of that information being known has a fu fundamental impact on shareholder value and therefore share prices. So I think, um, Mr Chair, what we're trying to get to is to make sure that if there are commercial transactions that occur in a public entity like through a share market, that they are somehow done in an orderly way that means that um, approval can be obtained late. Uh, and I notice in the um, MB report that, as was originally written, they did consider the terms too harsh, and there has been an event, has, has been some changes to, the, to what is suggested now, and we support those. But in reality, we know how markets work. We can sit in this house and we can make decisions. Uh, but at the end of the day, there will be value associated when these transactions occur. And what this side of the House and what I'm suggesting is we need to be very clear that we are not under undermining or compromising commercial transactions or value. I accept there is a fine line between that and gaming. Um, but there could be consideration given uh, to specifying uh, in more detail the provision that relates to publicly listed companies and the share market uh, and changes of control that might occur in that way. Because without that, uh, Mr Chair, it is my view that there could be a distortion in value and market share prices. And I don't think... Um, I, I, I would like the Minister to further explain to me that it is a compelling reason, the fact uh, that nobody knew this was going to happen before that day. Because if that is in fact the case, um, then I think it should be spelled out in more detail. As I've said previously, we support this legislation. We're just trying to make sure there aren't unintended consequences of what's going to occur here, 
and in particular my, my um, contribution at this stage is really around publicly listed companies and a degree of change and control in the share market. Uh, Jonathan Young. Thank you, sir. Um, just um, some some matters which I I don't.